Good morning and welcome on this fourth Sunday of Advent. It's great to have you here, very soon be Christmas. But it's still in Advent and I'm going to invite Patty, Deacon Patty, to light the Advent candles, all four of them today, and then we will have the singing of the candle song and our first hymn.
Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Man of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Dios Todopoderoso, te suplicamos que purifiques nuestra conciencia con tu visitación diaria, para que, cuando venga tu Hijo Jesucristo, encuentre nosotros la mansión que le ha sido preparada, quien vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, un solo Dios, ahora y por siempre. Amén. The first reading is from Samuel. Now it came to pass, when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to you, shepherds on people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you sh shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep to be the ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and have made you a great name, like the name of the great men who are, were on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in the place of their own, and move no more. Now shall, shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more, as previously. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies, also if the Lord tells you, he will make you a house. Una vez que el rey David se hubo establecido en su palacio, el Señor le dio descanso de todos los enemigos que lo rodeaban. Entonces el rey le dijo a profeta Natán, como puedes ver, yo habito en un palacio de cedro, mientras que el arca de Dios se encuentra bajo el toldo de una tienda de campaña. Bien, respondió Natán, haga su majestad lo que su corazón le dicte, pues el Señor está con usted. Pero aquella misma noche, la palabra del Señor vino a Natán y le dijo, ve y dile a mi siervo David que así dice el Señor. ¿Serás tú acaso quien me construya una casa para que yo habite? Desde el día en que saqué a los israelitas de Egipto, y hasta el día de hoy no he habitado en, en casa alguna, sino que he andado de acá para allá en una tienda de campaña, a manera de santuario. Todo el, templo que anduve, todo el tiempo que anduve con los israelitas, cuando mandé a tus gobernantes que pastorearan a mi pueblo Israel. ¿Acaso te aclamé alguno de ellos el no haberme construido una casa de cedro? Pues bien, dile a mi siervo David 
Y así dice el Señor Todopoderoso. Yo te saqué del redil para que, para que cuidaras de mis ovejas, para que lo gobernaras a mi pueblo. Yo he estado contigo por donde quiera que has ido, y por ti he aniquilado a todos tus enemigos, y ahora voy a hacerte tan famoso como a los grandes de la tierra. También voy a designar un lugar para mi pueblo Israel, y ahí los plantaré para que puedan vivir sin sobresaltos. Sus malvados enemigos no volverán a humillarlos, como lo han hecho desde el principio. Desde el día en que nombré gobernantes sobre mi pueblo Israel, y a ti te daré descanso de todos tus enemigos. Pero ahora el Señor te hace saber que será Él quien construya una casa. Tu casa y tu reinado durarán para siempre delante de mí. Tu trono quedará establecido para siempre. Palabra del Señor. Gracias, Señor. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what, a, what matter of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, also has conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her, her who has been, been called barren, for with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. A los seis meses Dios envió al ángel Gabriel a Nazaret, pueblo de Galilea, a visitar a una joven virgen comprometida para casarse con un hombre que se llamaba José, descendiente de David. La virgen se llamaba María. El ángel se acercó a ella y le dijo, Te saludo, tú que has recibido el favor de Dios. El Señor está contigo. Ante esta palabra, María se preguntó y se preguntaba, ¿Qué podría significar este saludo? No tengas miedo, María, Dios. No tengas miedo, María. Dios te ha bendecido su favor, le dijo el ángel. Quedarás encinta y darás a luz a un hijo y le pondrás por nombre Jesús. Él será un gran hombre y lo llamarás Hijo del Altísimo. Dios el Señor le dará el trono de su padre David y reinará sobre el pueblo de Jacob para siempre. Su reinado no tendrá fin. ¿Cómo podrá suceder esto? Le preguntó María el Ángel. Puesto que yo soy virgen, el Espíritu Santo vendrá sobre ti y el poder del de Altísimo te cubrirá con tu sombra. Así que al santo niño que van a ser lo llamarás hijo de Dios. También tu prima Isabel va a tener un hijo en su vejez. De hecho, la que decían que era estéril, ya está en el sexto mes de embarazo, porque para Dios no hay nada imposible. Aquí tienes a la esclava del Señor, contestó María, que la haga conmigo como me ha dicho. Con eso el ángel la dejó. El Evangelio del Señor. Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be 
according to your word. What if Mary had said, oh, <laughs> not me. What if she had said, I'm too young for this, or I'm just not good enough, or I really only want to live a quiet, uneventful life married to Joseph and bring up normal kids, or, you know, I'm happy to attend synagogue and keep the laws, but I don't want a long-term commitment, God. Mary could have said, nope, not interested, because God always allows people to answer freely. When God interacts with human beings, freedom of choice is imperative to God. God will never force a yes from anyone. God will never trick anyone into doing what he asks against their will. God never manipulates our love for him. And God would never make obedience the best choice if disobedience wasn't truly an option as well. And that's how God's always been. God even allows people to continue along a way of wrong choices. He lets them go along their ill-informed paths, permits people to imprison themselves in their own foolish designs. He even allows people to hit rock bottom. That's not where God wants people. It's that the choice to see a better way, to hear God's voice calling, and to want what God wants for us, what is the very best for us and for the world around us, that choice has to be ours. Mary could have said no, and God would have loved her just as much, but Mary was in tune with God. Even though she was a young girl, she already had a strong relationship with God. She was aware of how God works through human beings to transform the ways that things are into the way that they should be. She knew the prophecies of hope for her people. Her betrothal to Joseph had not diminished her faith and trust that God would send the Messiah, the Christ, to lift up the lowly, to scatter the proud in their conceit, and to demonstrate the priority of love, compassion, justice, and mercy. Her marriage to Joseph was important to her, but God, was her priority. So Mary said yes. And with that answer, all the angels must have rejoiced as the plan was set in motion for a new light to shine in the darkness, for a new hope, a new peace, a new kind of freedom to burst in on a world that had abandoned the way of love, that had relegated God to an afterthought in their lives. Mary's answer, here I am, your will be done, is an answer that God longs for from each one of us. They are words that change everything. Mary wasn't the first to say those words. Noah, Abraham, Deborah, Samuel, Moses, Paul, all the prophets, though some of those were pretty reluctant. Ultimately, though, every person who has said, okay, yes, Lord, your will be done, has known that it was the best choice. They have known the path might not be easy, but they have trusted that the God whom they have grown to know, 
The God whom they have experienced working for good in their lives and in the life of their communities. The God who is both awesomely incomprehensible creator and also intimate companion, shepherd and guide. They have trusted that this God wants to embrace them and the world in a parental love that desires the best for every single living thing. And so they said, yes, Lord, here I am, your will be done. But remember, God doesn't just throw us in the deep end and leave us to sink or swim. Even though we don't always realize it, God is preparing us for what he is calling us to do. And God provides support, not just his own presence, but the support of others, even if they are not aware of having that role. Joseph was Mary's support. Moses' father-in-law, and then following that, the elders of the tribes, were support for Moses. And then he had Joshua. When we say, yes, your will be done, that's when we stop asking, what's in this for me? What can I get out of doing this? Out of doing it. What am I giving back for what? What has God or the church done for me in order that I should be giving back? When we say your will be done to God, then those things don't matter anymore. Those words free us from the need to feel important. It frees us from doing things that are purely self-serving or even a little bit self-serving. It frees us for service. It frees us for purpose in our lives. It frees us to give meaning to our lives. We are set free to perform both small and large acts of care and compassion. We are freed to stand up for justice and mercy. We are freed to do God's work of love, the work that he has prepared for you and me to do, that he needs us to do. And God works with groups too. God calls particular communities, gives them gifts and abilities and opportunities to serve him. Good Shepherd has answered God's call to address the needs of our local community. And God has provided much of what we have needed to continue that ministry, even in this time of pandemic. Today, for example, we begin to, our, to host Family Promise Families for this Christmas week out at the North Ogden site because we cannot do it here. Here we are lifting up the lowly. We are bringing God's love to people in need. We are answering his call. Ogden Family Promise is one of the few Family Promise groups across America to have continued uninterrupted through the pandemic. And we have been part of that. This is our third time this year, J 
during the pandemic to host Family Promise families. That's faith. That is trust in God. That is continuing to share God's love even when the going is tough. Shepherd's Ball and Shepherd's Fold have found ways to continue to serve the community. Different, yes, but still serving. We've adapted. God has given us the guidance and the help to do that. And yet, and yet these ministries and others to which God calls our church involves the calling by God of individuals. You. Yes. You. What is God calling you to do? God called Mary to give birth to the divine word, to love incarnate. And God calls each one of us to give birth to the love of God in our lives. It doesn't involve changing diapers. Well, maybe it does. We don't know what God is calling us to do. But it does require ears that listen for God's call. God's call in our hearts. It requires eyes to see the need that God is asking us to address. It requires a heart that desires to deal with the injustices in our world and to advocate for the change that God wants, the transformation, not only of our life, but of the lives of others. It requires us to prioritize God as Mary did, to prioritize God's way of love and to grow our relationship and our trust in God to the point where, like Mary, we can unhesitatingly say, yes, your will be done when God calls us to something. And like Mary, we too will be blessed as we rejoice in God our Saviour. In the name of that God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
mercy and plea. We believe in the one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the crown of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people for this fourth Sunday of Advent. And in response, we will say together, let your, your kindness come. Gathered as the church of God in this place, let us pray together for the, king, the coming of the kingdom. Lord of heaven, may the church be quiet enough to hear your voice, humble enough to move your way, and excited enough to spread the good news. Living God, let, let your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Lord of heaven, bless all who lead with integrity and respect for others. Bless all in positions of authority, with humility and a sense of right. May unjust practices be changed for good, and conflicts of great tension be peaceful, peacefully resolved. Living God, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Lord of heaven, make our homes places of loving acceptance and developing faith. Teach us all in our friendships to grow in generosity of spirit. Living God, let, let your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Lord of heaven, give patience and courage to all who have to wait. When the waiting is long and painful, bring healing to all who are wounded, whether physically or emotionally and give them assurance of your presence. Living God, let your kingdom come. We pray especially for those we know who are ill or in any trouble. Among them, we also pray for Jackson, Tom, Michael, Stephanie, Marnie, Jody, Rachel, Sot, Stephen, Chad, Lisa, Barbara, Sharon, Robert, Corey, Alex, Diane, Betty, Catherine, Chad, Vern, Jackie, Larry, Roy, Reuben, Diane, Phil, and Rach. Rosa, Doña Lidia, Don Jose, Doña Alicia, Mikey, Nina, Maricela, Eva, Lorena, Chela, Lord of Heaven. Welcome into your eternity those who have died to this life and whose hope is in you. Comfort those who mourn them and reach into their pain with your love. Living God, let, let your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Lord of heaven, we thank you for your faithful promise to us, fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. We become his kinship in our lives. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most Christ merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Dios omnipotente tenga misericordia de ustedes, perdone todos sus pecados por Jesucristo nuestro Señor, les fortalezca en toda bondad y por el poder del Espíritu Santo les conserve en la vida eterna. Amen. La paz del Señor sea siempre con ustedes. And also with you. <laughs> yes. And also with you. Rinden al Señor la gloria debido a su nombre, entren a su presencia trayéndole ofrendas. And before we set up the altar, just a few notices. Um, you will find the Christmas services online, and they should go online early on Christmas Eve, the 24th. And um, we will be having a pageant, a children's pageant, an outdoor one on 24th Street, masks, socially distanced, both for those taking part and also for those coming to watch. And then following that, we will be distributing Holy Communion on, um, on outside the church on Grant Avenue until 5.30 on Christmas Eve. And for those of you who would like um, a service on Christmas Day, I will be hosting a Zoom morning prayer at 8 a.m on Christmas morning and I invite you to join me for that as well. And then on the Sunday after Christmas, um, our service will actually be one that has been recorded by all, uh, a lot of the churches in the diocese and it is um, the service of lessons and carols and I encourage you to watch that as well. And you will find all that information on our Facebook page and on our website.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We bring them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. And vedo es digno, justo y saludable, date gracias en todo tiempo y lugar, Padre omnipotente, creador de cielo y tierra. Porque enviasto a tu amado hijo para redimirnos del pecado y de la muerte, y para hacernos en el herederos de la vida eterna, para que cuando vuelva en poder y gran triunfo a juzga al mundo, no gocemos contemplando su manifestación sin temor ni vergüenza. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Padre Santo y bondadoso, en tu amor infinito, nos hiciste para ti, y cuando caemos un pecado, y quedamos esclavos del mal y de la muerte. Tú, en tu misericordia, enviaste a Jesucristo, tu Hijo único y eterno, para compartir nuestra naturaleza humana, para vivir y morir como uno de, de nosotros, y así reconciliarnos contigo, el Dios y Padre de todos. Extendió sus brazos sobre la cruz y se ofreció en obediencia a tu voluntad, un sacrificio perfecto por todo el mundo. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Padre, en este sacrificio de alabanza y acción de gracias, Celebramos el memorial de nuestra redención, recordando su muerte, resurrección y ascensión. Te ofrecemos estos dones. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Todo esto de te pedimos por tu Hijo Jesucristo, por él y con él y en él, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, tu yo son el Honor la gloria, Padre Omnipotente, ahora y por siempre. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Eterno Dios, Padre Celestial, en tu bondad nos has, nos has aceptado como miembros vivos de tu Hijo, nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Nos has nutrido con alimento espiritual, en el sacramento de su cuerpo y de su sangre. Envíenos ahora en paz al mundo, revístenos de fuerza y de valor para amarte y servirte con alegría y sencillez de corazón. Por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. 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 The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you, remain with you, and with all whose lives you touch, today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.